that's the other thing we wanted to, to showcase in this movie is that nobody thinks that it's an epidemic because people don't really die from it. You know, like, people don't take steroids and then that day drop dead because of the steroids. You know? Correct, so yeah, yeah. People don't worry about it. You know, it's not like, I mean, they spend more time worrying about weed than they do steroids, which is crazy. <laughs> that is not true. Um, it's an epidemic, but it should be something that's talked about in schools and high school. You know, yeah. the first cycle I ever did was an 18-year-old kid in high school where I knew this guy at work who was like, oh, you're trying to work out? Do you want to do some steroids? And I was like, what is steroids? And he was like, oh, you just inject testosterone into your body and you get bigger because of it. So here I am, a dumb 18-year-old kid still growing. Right. And who knows how that would how that's going to affect me when I get older or yeah. even that affects me now, you know? Yeah, totally. And that's... But if I would have known, yeah, yeah. would have made a different decision. Yeah, and I think that's that's the big thing we're talking about here is, um, you know, I still work out, obviously, I'm sure you do too. And even when I go to the gym now, it's so crazy because, well, besides the gym, I'm just driving past middle schools and these kids are already twice my size. So I'm 32 and almost all my friends are twice my size anyway. But the fact that I got to compete now with middle schoolers because they're twice my size, that's not cool. You know what I mean? So it's, it's either something's going in the water or something else is happening and i think like you said it's got to be something that needs to be talked about a little bit more not necessarily in a negative or positive way but at least the conversation the discussion but you know i don't I, people always ask me well you know you did steroids in the movie and and you've done steroids before you know they ask me two questions they go will you do steroids again and i always tell them if it's for a specific reason then i will but just because i would never do it again um, yeah the second thing to that is, do I think steroids is bad? And uh, do I think they're bad? And uh, for me, it's I don't. I think anybody, anything can be abused, but if steroids are done under doctor supervision and a correct amount for your body and your blood work is checked weekly or every other week, um, I, think, I think you can enjoy the benefits of them without affecting your health. And you have to be educated on what they're doing, how they react to certain things, and then and then um, and when you're getting off of them, the correct post cycle therapy, which we even talk about in the movie, post cycle therapy. Yeah, and then that that's a, that's a big deal, and I think that's that's the education that even if you know, like you said, people are going to do it no matter what, where it's legal or illegal, doesn't matter. Um, but it's the knowledge that people need to get. If you're going to do it, make sure you do it right. Like you said, don't abuse it. Um, if you have to do it, at least do it the right way. Have you ever um, found yourself um, like either? too addicted to the gym, to yourself, to maybe even steroids if you've ever taken them. Yeah. Um, and where do you see yourself in the fitness world right now? Yeah. Well, for me, you know, when I was in uh, the health club industry, I first started, the only reason I wanted to do it was because that was just a sexy industry to me. You know, it's like, because I loved working out, right? You know that. So I worked out for a while. And it, I did, like you said, I got addicted to it and then I got, got addicted to training people. And then once I did that, I was like, okay, now I'm working out, but it's not as sexy if I'm not developing somebody. So like for the past, what's it been eight years, I think. So, yeah. So, I mean, where I was actually getting paid now, uh, probably up until about five years ago when I started working at, um, Coca-Cola prior to me working at Monster, um, I was training people on the side, just making money right before, because I got recertified because it's what, every four years if I remember. So I got, yeah, re yeah I got recertified and I did on the side a little bit. And it was great. But then I just kind of, I don't know, dude, like I love working out still, but I just can't make time for it anymore. And I don't know what it is because everything's the same. I still have a job, same hours I did before. Maybe I'm getting older. Maybe I'm not on, st maybe I'm not on steroids. Maybe I need to get on steroids. Because maybe just or or just take a needle and just do that, and then maybe it'll like give me some, you know, placebo effect of just wanting to work out more. And it could. You know what I mean? Like, are you finding that too? Like, have have has your workout declined? Because believe it or not, the only reason I stay shredded, to put it in your words, not mine, because I don't I don't think I'm shredded. I'm semi shredded though. It's just because of nutrition. I don't know if you know yeah. this. We haven't talked about this, but uh, I'm full vegan now. Full vegan. Full vegan. Well, I mean, I had I have fish every now and then, so I guess I'm pescatarian. But I'm kind of vegan though. That's pretty vegan, man. You don't eat burgers anymore. You don't eat steak. Nothing. Like no chicken. Nothing. 
So this is interesting. So we're going to put it on blast because it's, it's, it's going to be a conversation on, on a few of my episodes because I'm going to dip a lot into nutrition and, uh, and just some of my knowledge. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about what's going on in the food industry. Um, but that's a big reason why I'm a vegan now. But I actually was diagnosed with Crohn's, um, Crohn's disease about a year ago. Turns out I've had it for almost five years. So, and yeah, and what, what's even more wild with Crohn's, and if you know a little bit about there's a couple different cases. Most Crohn's, like 70%, are no matter what I eat, I can't control myself. I have to run to the bathroom. I don't have that. So mine's a little bit, mine's different. So <clears throat> Crohn's disease, essentially it's your intestines. There's scar tissue built up inside of it. So it's almost like stepping on a hose, right? So that's, that's Crohn's disease in a nutshell. But mine is so far at the very end of my intestines <clears throat> that I won't know that I have a flare up or an attack until like I'm completely full. Right, you get what I'm saying? So I won't yeah. I won't know what I'm eating. So it turns out I was in the hospital probably in the past four years, maybe ten times. And every time they told me it was constipation. Take laxatives. Well, that's the worst thing you can give to a Crohn's patient because it makes it worse and worse. Because right. it's just scarring up the intestines. So my gastrologist about a year ago, well now she is. But uh, my last time in the hospital, she's like, you know, I think we you have Crohn's. And here's the solution. If anybody has Crohn's out there, you probably know what I'm talking about. We don't know what you can or can't eat. So just eat whatever you want and then process of elimination. That's their solution. Not a good solution. So here I am like, you know, 18 months ago, I'm eating like I normally do burgers, steaks, fries, all that. And then I just start. Cut, but I'm in and out of the hospital every time that happens. So then I just start cutting out everything. And then eventually I'm like, all right, I watched this Netflix documentary like everyone has. And I'm like, <laughs> don't, dude. You'll be a vegan the second you watch it. I don't even know what it's called. The, here's what it's called. Every Netflix documentary is going to turn you vegan. So don't watch it as you like burgers. Because that's... Are you talking about Food Inc.? Food Inc.'s a good one. Uh, what the Health. What the Health. Have you seen that? But it's so good though, because you know you know you'll cave. <laughs> okay, I'll be straight vegan right now. I watch this shit. I ain't doing it. Yes, so I was like, all right, let me let me try that out. So about eight months ago, I just went full vegan. Um, so I think that's the big reason I'm able to maintain my figure because I'm in, I'm I'm intaking as much protein as I can, my, and my caloric intake is actually pretty good too because I'll do a lot of shakes and shit, and I do plant based protein. I cut out whey, if you can believe that. So I do all. No no way. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, no, no way. All plant-based. And uh, I want to start uh, filming more because I started on my YouTube channel, started filming my workouts a little bit and just trying to do what I can to spread a little knowledge, even if it's like an 18, 19-year-old kid that can't afford personal training. And there's so many videos out there. But, you know, I, I figured if I'm doing it, why not document it? Put it out hey, there. Man, Maybe someone will do it. One person. That's it, hundred percent. You got it. In terms of steroids and and I just I like you said I don't see a need for it right now, but I gotta tell you in this day and age the way Instagram is and YouTube and the world that we live in I kind of get how people are like I need to change my image. You know those guys diet and, and work their asses off at the gym. You know they totally just get an extra twenty percent. Yeah, know? yeah, you got it. And hey. You know, Getting legally prescribed.
that's another great thing about steroids if you do them right under doctor supervision. It's just gonna make you who you were. Your, your you know, your twenty year old self who was rambunctious and yeah. sexually ready to put holes in the walls and shit. <laughs> right, right. And if you're if you're married and got a girlfriend, if you're on steroids, she's thanking you. There's no you know, there's <laughs> there's not a whole lot of downfalls in that situation, so you should not be pissed about that. And now with that said, two last thing. Um, so if one is wanting to pursue acting, so what, uh, like for all those listeners out there that maybe wanted to do something, what do you think, <laughs> aside from Google, what do you think is the best is the best way to go about it when you do figure it out? You know, what, any advice you can give those guys? If you're coming out here for fame, for fortune, um, you're in for a rude awakening, you know? Uh, yeah. The percentage of people who just come here thing you know they're in the next star wars movie it's pretty rare you know so yeah. um what i would do is wherever you're at whatever state you're in stay there and take acting classes don't get headshots don't try to get an agent literally work on your craft to nice. so where people are clapping for your performance where you finally understand what it what it means to be an actor and for me it was it was being able to fully immerse yourself in the scene yeah. and that's a good start to going okay Maybe I'm ready to get headshots. Maybe I'm ready to maybe even look for a commercial agent. Um, wow. And that's what I would also do is get a commercial agent first. Do some, try to just see what auditioning is like. It sucks. No matter how prepared you are, when someone's staring at you face to face, you're going to shake. You're going to forget words. Like the, the top pros, they, they hate you too. It happens, yeah. Then when you're confident that maybe it take, could take you three months, it could take you a year. Um, then pursue the business side of it. But like like that acting coach Robert DeBonzo said to me, Hollywood is not going anywhere. That's good stuff. Good advice, man. I love it. And we're well, going to... No, I mean, that was I money. That's successful. <laughs> that was money. I might cut it right there and just black. That's just... Yeah. That was solid. Hollywood ain't going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> and scene. No, that, that, that's, that's good shit, dude. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm not asking for myself, even though I wish I could. But if you are. Yeah, yeah. The same dude, if, if it was, and it's like, yeah. dude, I just wish 10 years ago I took a risk. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But uh, I don't know. Who knows? It's you never too know. late, bro. I'm, I, t- I was 28 when I moved out here. That's true. That's true. But I mean, you, you, look, you look younger than I am. See, me... I'm actually getting shorter. Like I'm dating into a, I'm Benjamin buttoning it right now. Like I'm getting shorter as my life. It's going to get to a point where even like the people that cast Tom Cruise in movies are going to be like, no, nah, this motherfucker's too short. Like there's no way yeah. we're hiring Tony. Can't find enough people. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no. But yeah, you would come out <laughs> yeah. being a, a white male with some muscle. You would come out yeah. like, yeah, I'm small, but you'd have Napoleon syndrome and be a tough guy. And you know, you just have to roll with that 100% of, of the time. Yeah, and I mean, dude, who knows if there's anybody, I even have a script that I can write and we can reboot Napoleon. Has there even been a Napoleon movie? I don't think so. I don't think there has. Probably not. Well, so. it's out there. I'm ready for it. You're next. I'm next, bro. <laughs> no, man, I want to congratulate you on doing this because, you know, I think a lot of people get the idea of what, what YouTube can do and creating a channel and, like, interviewing people and talking. You know, yeah. they're not, they're too afraid to do it because they're like, oh, there's too many people that already do it. There's never enough people that do anything, to be honest with you. So, Absolutely. you know, shout out to you for wanting to do this. And whether you have one subscriber now, we can look at this a year later and have, and you'll have 100,000 subscribers. You know, it, it's, I think you have a, a good personality for it. You have a good look for it. And, thank you. Uh, thank you. And a good voice for it. So, congrats. I appreciate you, bro. Okay. Well, guys, hey, this concludes episode two of Getting Socialized. Can't thank you enough for tuning in, and I'm sure if you subscribe to my channel or you follow me anywhere on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you heard me talk about it. You need to buy Anabolic Life. It's $4.99. The best actor right here voted by the Orlando Film Festival, Chris Levine. Make sure you follow him at only Chris Levine. Follow myself. Click that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. Chris, thank you so much, man, for hanging with me. I appreciate you.